So this is the Grim Gazette, everybody. This is something new from Old Spirits Investigations and Don't Turn Around Podcast, and from me as as one of the founders of Old Spirits, or OSI, Old Spirits Investigations. I wanted to come up with something that was fun, something that was different, and we're doing weird news. We're doing news the macabre. We're doing news articles on cryptids, on UFOs, on... And these are all these are all either coming from my personal research or research done by you, the community. And this is episode two, and it's a thrill to have you here. So we're kicking off with our first news story from Reuters. World's smallest escape room is a coffin. Let's dive in, shall we? Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Barcelona. Not Barcelona, but Barcelona. The fear of being buried alive and trapped in a coffin haunted writer Edgar Allan Poe's characters and has now inspired what is billed as the world's smallest escape room, a mortuary-themed experience not suitable for claustrophobes. The live-action puzzle game developed by Spanish company Horrorbox in Barcelona, sorry, Barcelona, um, is called Catalepsy, a reference to a medical condition easily mistakable by death. My claustrophobia could not do this. Patients at uh, pat patients. Whoops, Freudian slip showing. Um, kind of like the Victorian window coffins. Um, hold that thought, though, Scythe. Hold that thought on the Bigfoot forest jelly. Participants have 30 minutes to free themselves from inside a coffin by solving puzzles through teamwork with their partner in a neighboring casket, communicating via loudspeakers. Uh, they are monitored over CCTV cameras by game master Aurora Albarino, who defined escape room as a gym for the mind. She said the attraction aimed to recreate a situation that sooner or later we'll all experience. Your own, sorry. Your own funeral. Hopefully she doesn't sound like that, but. Uh, Miriam Castalea, a 22 year old actress selected by the company to demonstrate the game, acknowledged she felt a little bit scared after the coffin's lid closed. Her partner in the demonstration, 39-year-old dancer Carlos Granado, said he had taken part in about 15 escape rooms before, but described this experience as unique. While booking their tickets, players can customize several aspects, including the type of casket or whether they want to be cremated in a blaze of virtual flames and artificial smoke. Man. Um, catalepsy draws inspiration from the fear of being buried alive or tapophobia that was widespread during the 19th century, as reflected in Poe's story, The Premature Burial, which was adapted in a film in 1962. So there you go, that's two of them right there doing this thing. And I, I mean, that's fascinating. I think the, the only issue I have with it is, okay, so you're using two-way communication, but unlike a like an escape room, of course, I mean, this is, they're, they're advertising it as the smallest escape room on the planet. Um, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'd be curious as to how many of you have done escape rooms before because I actually had to sort of keep myself like in check when I was, I can sometimes get so wrapped up in an illusion that, and this is, this is again, something that I have to be careful about when I'm, uh, when I'm, when I'm uh, investigating. <clears throat> I can get so hard caught no. up. Hard no. Hard <laughs> no. There you go. I, I, I can get some, sometimes I get so caught up in something, I get a little too invested into it. And I guess what's different about a, an escape room is that with an escape room, you've got different things around you, different props, different, different clues. You don't have a lot of room in a coffin, but I get it. You know, I get it. Smallest escape room. I, and I do love escape rooms. I mean, I've done two. I think I've done two. If I'm done too, I know I've done at least one, and it was fun as hell. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the crap out of it. Okay, this one still blows my mind the more I read about it. Toddler gets stuck after climbing into a claw machine looking for a toy in an Australian shopping mall. My first thought was, well, that kid's dead because you're not going to get that claw to, to get on anything, let alone a toddler. But yeah, I'll read that again for the kids in the back. Toddler gets stuck after climbing into into a uh, uh, claw machine 
looking for a toy in Australian shopping mall. <laughs> I knew I knew Twitch Mom was gonna have thoughts on that. Okay, Brisbane, Brisbane, Australia. Australian police came to the aid of a three-year-old boy after he became trapped inside a claw machine at a suburb shopping mall. G'day. Video of the un of the unusual rescue Saturday was shared on social media by Queensland police on Thursday. It showed the toddler sitting inside the glass-walled box filled with plush toys, blissfully unaware of his predicament. <laughs> oh my God. Brisbane is the Australia's Florida. Oh, damn. Damn. That's, that's just, whew, holy cow. That's, 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 that's rough. That's rough. I mean, ouch. Okay. Um, the boy's father, Timothy Hopper, said his son had disappeared in the claw machine and was inside it in, quote, unquote, a split second. <clears throat> I had zero chance to react to it. It was unbelievable how fast he climbed up there. The Australian Broadcasting Corporation reported Hopper saying. <laughs> For anybody watching this, whether it's in the VOD or on, on, on YouTube... I'm sorry for my Australian accent. I know it sucks, but I'm working on it, mate. Um, okay. The video then shows the officers and the boy's parents encouraging him into a safe corner at the back of the machine and to cover his eyes while the police shatter a glass panel to free him unharmed. The video ends with one of the officers joking with the boy. You want a prize? Which one do you want? <laughs> Volume is up. Hit it. Claw in order. Oh dear God. <laughs> this claw sucks, dude. I want a toy. <laughs> Are you able to get into that back corner? Hey, Ethan. Ethan, go to that back corner. Go over to that corner over there. But I want the toy here, Dad! Go to mum, go to mum. Go to mum. Go to mum. Cover his eyes. Oh, bless him. Bless him. <laughs> now, Ethan, cover your eyes. This is, oh. this, is like, this is like the ultimate dream for a kid. <laughs> the kid's face is priceless. Oh, come on. Come on, Pip. You got to admit, that's cute as hell. <laughs> that is cute as hell. Oh, man. That's going to be playing at his 21st birthday. <laughs> Absolutely. That is great. Oh, man. I mean, that kid, but, but you got to admit, that that's like a little kid's dream I and mean, especially at that age i mean I, I can only assume that because the, the the things are so big the kid's like well i'll just crawl up this little chute and i'll get it and <laughs> i mean wow that that that's dedication i'm surprised the kids didn't suddenly flood to flood to grab toys yeah i know right <laughs> oh man that is that is ridiculous, man. That is amazing. I, I love that. That was that was that was a good one. That was a good one. That was a good one. Okay. Now this next story, I'm 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 reading because one, I think it's a great story. I think it's a fantastic story. Uh, and I know many of you, particularly in the United States, probably heard about this. Uh, from NPR, Elmo takes a turn as a therapist and asks everyone how they're doing. And well, let's just say, when Elmo talks, people answer. And what what an amazing story. What an amazing story. I mean, uh, no, no, not again. No, seriously, I like this story. I like this story a lot. I do. I think this is really kind of cool. I'm glad Minivan didn't see that. Uh, he's old enough to understand not to do that, but he's my kid. I know the impulsive thoughts are strong. Oh, you heard this for three days at work. Okay. Okay. Well, it's cute. I'm, and you're right. You're right. 
well let's let's go on ahead let's go on ahead and let's talk about why this is a story worth repeating maybe not maybe not three days in a row but i hear you um so at first glance it might look like a run-of-the-mill social media check-in how is everybody doing but the message came from elmo furry red friend to kids muppets and anyone else and elmo is known on sesame street and beyond for his capacity to care as much as elmo is hated that is one of the coolest things about elmo is that you know elmo is that muppet that really does for the lack of a better term i mean he just he gives a shit. and that that's a beautiful thing about elmo it's a beautiful thing about elmo <laughs> okay uh, uh i'll have to hear about that except for rocco now rocco i don't know rocco i don't know i'd have to, i'd have to find out more about rocco um so the responses flooded in on X and Instagram, threads and Facebook, and conversations sparked on Reddit and elsewhere. People unburdened themselves, and Elmo took it all in. On X alone, Elmo's questions received 180 million views by midday Wednesday. Um, so yeah, as you can imagine, it would be like, Elmo is just checking in. How is everybody doing? Responses on Friday and Monday differ wildly. One of Elmo's earliest check-in messages was posted on threads where Elmo asked how people were doing. Just on my way to buy some balsamic vinegar, came one popular reply to which Elmo responded, Elmo hopes it's you. I'm doing okay. Hope you are too, said another. Getting a reply, Elmo loves you. Other notes wished Elmo a happy Friday, but then the weekend was over. And when Elmo echoed his question on X on Monday, that's when things took a turn. Not well, Elmo. They done raised rent and everything at this point. I'm coming to live with you on Sesame Street. Baby girl, hooray, told Elmo on Facebook. Elmo would love that. Hashtag neighbors. Elmo, I'm having a rough time. Love you, though. Weather woman said on Instagram. Elmo hopes you're doing okay. Elmo loves you too. Oh, sorry. Elmo loves you today and every day. On X, people aired litanies of personal and relationship problems and more general angst. They spoke about being tired, broke, and un unsure how to improve things, and feeling disconnected from others. As a user named Becky said in one of the massive responses, people were trauma dumping so hard on Elmo, the official Sesame Street account had to tweet out mental health resources, adding, God help us. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna break here and just, and, just, and just add something to that, okay? Um, here's my thing about that. All right, here's my thing about that. It was a chance for people to sort of air. And I personally think the people that who the people that run the Sesame Street uh, uh, social media platforms should be given a medal for what they did. Because that's exactly what you do. Are you having a tough time? Well, look, here are some here are some resources to help you out. You know, National Suicide Hotline. If you're having an issue, call them. I mean, that that is that's pretty freaking heavy and that's what i've always loved about sesame street sesame street always went for me as a kid i always felt for me it they always went the extra mile they always went the extra mile and and i love that i did i love that so yeah i'm 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 good with this i'm i'm good with with this i think it's i think it's kind of cool i think it's kind of cool um well, let's see. A recurring theme also popped up. Adults remarked on how affirming it was to connect with Elmo. All the love to Sesame Street team for still taking care of all of us grown children. A commenter wrote on Instagram. We may be chronologically outside the demographic, but we, but we never left the street. Thank you. <laughs> President Biden weighed in late Tuesday saying, our friend Elmo's right. We have to be there for each other, offer our help for a neighbor in need, and above all else, ask for help when we need it. And by the way, I'm just gonna say it. Trump's a sick I'm sorry, that was implied here. I think the, I think the editors took that out, but that, that's just me. Is Elmo a gifted therapist? Now we're now we're 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 we're, we're getting in some dark territory here. <laughs> Is Elmo a gifted therapist? Well, let's find out. In his responses this week, and let's be honest, in most responses since it was, uh, let's be honest, in most moments since he was introduced in the 80s, Elmo has shown that he exemplifies 
three of the most important attributes of a therapist, as defined by the influential 20th century psychologist Carl Rogers, the driving force behind person-centered therapy. Um, Rogers' list, list starts with congruence, meaning authenticity and genuineness, being real. The other, two uh, the other two core qualities for a therapist, he said, are acceptance that comes from unconditional positive regard and empathy that comes from understanding another person. While Elmo hasn't been able to reply to every message on his accounts, his responses are winning praise. Consider his answer to a student on Instagram who told him, I don't want to go to class, Elmo. I need words of encouragement. And he said, You can do it. Try to make a new friend today. Elmo. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Elmo told the student. That will make class extra fun. And tomorrow you will be extra excited to see them. To that, another user replied, Bro, that's actually such good advice. Lol. In many cases, commenters on the replies showed people sharing positive messages and practical advice with each other, encouraging people who are struggling to keep sharing and working to make things better. They are words we all need to say and messages we need to hear. And in one short message, Elmo reminded us to make time for each other and listen. Wow, Elmo is glad he asked, Elmo said on Tuesday, as responses to his question continue to pour in. Elmo learned that it is important to ask a friend how they are doing. Elmo will check in again soon, friends. Elmo loves you. Hashtag emotional well-being. Um... But T, you got to follow this up with the a-hole that attacked Elmo during the interview on this. Okay, I didn't hear about that, so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to send me a link to that, and then I'll cover it in the next one because I got everything mapped out here, I got everything planned out. Um, <laughs> apologies for disappearing. I had the sudden urge to take a shower. Um, being autistic, being autistic, I related a lot to Zoe, and that's the thing. That's the thing. It, it's it's this really cool. Um, way of, uh, you know, the way of, of, of Sesame Street connecting us together. And, you know, when I think of, you know, being better, this is what I'm talking about. Whenever I, whenever I say, you know, we can be better. Hashtag be better. <clears throat> this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, going back to the article, though, leveraging the interest in Elmo's tweet to posting a reply with emotional well-being resources is exactly what Sesame Workshop was created to do, said Aaron Beisman, the organization's vice president of audience development, uh, in a statement. So, yeah, that's what I mean. Larry David, oh, Larry David did it. Well, yeah, that that's, Larry David can suck it. I'm sorry, I have never found that guy funny. Um, I think he's a bit of a, he, he, he you know, he should always have a, uh, a wheel of Gouda with. I know it's his shtick. I know it's his shtick. But you know, I would punch. I would. I would. I would gladly punch Larry David. He's a bit. He's a bit of a. He's a bit of a of a chump himself. Um. All right. Going back to this. I'm sending the articles in DM on Discord. Thank you. <laughs> um. As the grown-ups helping Emma and all Sesame Street friends with their social media accounts, our social media team is cognizant of the relationship the audience have developed with the characters over the last 54 years, he said. Elmo has been there too. A Muppet's life might seem like an extra, and an, like an eternally happy mix of friends, music, and community spirit, but Elmo has struggled. His honesty about dealing with challenges is part of what makes him so relatable to young kids who share his excitement about the novelties of life and his frustration when things don't go his way. Consider, consider Elmo's rocky relationship with Rocco, his friend Zoe's famous and some quarters infamous pet rock. With his intense feelings, Elmo hasn't always shown patience in navigating his friend's attachment to an inanimate object. Video of a 2004 clash between the friends over a cookie reserved for Rocco went viral in recent years. Their complex dynamic even provoked a uh, Lacanian, Lacanian? Lacanian psychoanalysis. Has anybody ever set a, seen a rock eat a cookie? Elmo is just curious, Elmo tweeted in 2022 uncorking another front in the dispute. And once again, the Red Rascal's message sounded far beyond Sesame Street's brownstones. Yes, my friend, actor Dwayne Johnson, AKA The Rock replied, the rock devours cookies, all kinds of cookies. He added, tell Cookie Monster to move it over because I'm coming to Sesame Street to kick ass and eat cookies. 
I freaking love Wayne, Dwayne Johnson. For the record, that didn't set well with Cookie Monster, who isn't one for letting things go, especially if things in question are cookies. The blue cookie enthusiast eagerly accepted The Rock's challenge. I want to see that throwdown. I want to see that throwdown. Ah, uh, as Elmo caused a new sensation by asking people how people are doing, other famous Sesame Street residents also chimed in. Cookie Monster made a particularly solid offer. Oop, that was the wrong one. I wanted to do this. We here to talk about talk it out whenever you want. We will also supply cookies. I was always a I, Cookie Monster was always my jam. Cookie Monster was always my jam. If you or someone you know is in crisis, please call, text, or chat with the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline at 988 or contact the Crisis Text Line by texting TALK to 741741. It's pretty damn impressive. I'm a sucker for stories like that. I think that's I think that is absolutely freaking awesome. And I, I guess I'm a sucker for it too because it's it's Sesame Street. All right. So it says here inside nine of the most disturbing crime stories to make headlines in 2023, we're going to be looking, we're not going to be looking at all nine of them. I just want to make sure everybody's aware of that. We're just going to be looking at a few of them because some of them, yes, we have to take a look at like the, like the lead in the very first one, which is, which is a true crime fanatic was arrested for committing murder out of curiosity. A true crime fanatic was arrested for committing murder out of curiosity. I suggest you let that one marinate. Let's go, everybody. Here we go. I think I was out of my mind, said 23-year-old Jung Yoo Young, a South Korean woman who confessed to murdering a tutor she met online out of curiosity. Jung, or Young, a, we're going to say Young, a self-professed true crime fanatic prepared for the murder meticulously. She searched the web for ways to hide a body, spent hours watching and reading true crime stories. Then she masqueraded as a schoolgirl in need of a tutor, went to her chosen victim's house, and stabbed her to death. At a nearby store, she purchased bleach and trash bags, returned to the victim's home, and dismembered her. Young's crucial mistake, however, came when she hired a taxi to take her to a wooded area with a suitcase full of body parts in hand, the taxi driver found her suspicious and alerted the authorities who then found the victim's body, bloody clothes, and parts of her body and promptly arrested Young. We are conducting tests to see if she is a psychopath, a police representative said at the time. Yeah, yeah, definitely premeditated. Kind of like this one. An Instagram influencer killed her doppelganger in order to fake her own death. Yeah. And this will, this still will not get, this will still not rid the world of influencers, but let's go in February. And I looked the, and, and I looked these up. I looked these up. These are all legit, especially the last one we're going to cover in February, 2023, a German Iraqi Instagram beauty influencer identified only as Shaba. Oh wait. Sha, Shahraban, Shahraban K. And that's how you got to say it. Shiraban K. Got to get that blue steel in there. So in February 2023, a German Iraqi Instagram beauty influencer identified only as Shiraban K was accused of murdering another beauty blogger. God. Jeez, these names. Um, Khadija O. The reason Shiraban K wanted to fake her own death, and Khadija happened to look just like her. Dubbed the doppelganger murder by the German press, the incident was equal parts bizarre and gruesome. When police discovered the victim's body inside Shirabin K's Mercedes, she had been stabbed more than 50 times to the point that her face was unrecognizable. Shirabin K allegedly committed the murder to escape troubles at home. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I'm just, I'm, I'm just let, I'm in, in, in the, in, I'm playing it again. I, let that one I mean, the girl is an influencer. She's an influencer. She's a beauty blogger. She's got a Mercedes 
but she's having troubles at home and previously tried to lure as many as five other women to a similar fate. She also reportedly recruited her friend Shakir K to help her. <sighs> Reminds me of how we are saying video games are making our kids violent while we are just letting uh, tired house moms listen to true crime all day without problems. Yeah, I know. Troubles at home. She did video for the murder, for content. Exactly. She was she was short on content. So side, have you ever called me up and say, "Yo, bro, I'm trying to make some content. Come on over." Nope. Not happening. Not happening. I, 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 I mean, there it is. Yeah. A Colorado dentist was arrested for allegedly killing his wife by poisoning her protein shakes. Yeah. And this is the thing. I, now, I, I must admit, there is a fine line between the paranormal and true crime, which is why we're kind of getting into some of these things. But the thing I notice, the one constant thread in the guy killing his wife are a crap ton of pictures that all look like this, where the guy's like, I mean, I've never understood that. I have never, don't worry, we'll come and investigate your ghost. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, X-Ray. Thank you. Um, <laughs> not because I sent you the baby murderer. Yeah, I, know, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. But, uh, but I mean, every time, every time somebody says, every time somebody says, you know, this guy was, was trying to kill his wife, they always go to these pictures. They always have a truckload of pictures. Ghost hunter murder stating, I just wanted more ghost to hunt. I mean, you know, side, it's a possibility there. So in March, police took 45 year old Colorado dentist, James Craig into custody charging him with first degree murder of his wife, Angela, Angela, by poisoning her protein shakes <sighs> with cyanide and arsenic. Man, that's an ugly way to go. Uh, it's, it's one of the, it is one of, the, one of the true things about being a writer. Whenever you're doing, whenever you're writing a murder mystery or anything like that, you look up poisons and you're going to get red flagged by somebody. And I mean, I, I, I have to wonder how many times, you know, people have red flagged somebody and they got, Okay, let's look at the. Let's go, oh wait, yeah, this is no, this isn't a murder because you notice we got we got cyanide, we got arsenic, then they're going to creepy pasta, and then they're going to, <clears throat> and then and then they're yeah, you see, and then yeah, yeah, okay, here here they're going to Twitch and they're just hanging out. So yeah, yeah, this is a writer. This is definitely a writer. Um, <laughs> exactly. Police said the first instance of poisoning occurred on March sixth when Angela. Texted her husband saying, I feel drugged. What she was experiencing was not a drug, but rather arsenic that her husband had allegedly put in her morning protein shake. Now, this is a stupid thing. Just for the record, he replied, I didn't drug you. Dude. <laughs> Dude. After this failed to kill Angela, James reportedly ordered potassium cyanide to his office at Summerbrook Dental Group, telling supplier he did need he needed it for a surgery. When a co-worker opened the package and confronted him, James said that Angela had asked him to order it for her. Angela then unknowingly ingested two protein shakes laced with cyanide, which sent her to the hospital twice, with her final visit being on March 15th. She died three days later after suffering a seizure. This one, I want you all to do your homework on because this story is totally and completely effed up. The body of a teen who was mysteriously unsubscribed from life near Alex Murdaugh's estate. Remember that name, everybody. Alex Murdaugh was exhumed and re-examined. This is a big ass deal. This is a big ass deal. Um, this is the this this is the crime photo from 2015. Yes, yes, Pip. When I I I've been sitting on this one because I didn't want to I didn't want to um. I didn't want to uh, uh, mention this to you because I knew you would be like, ooh, and yeah, get on this. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, second, and he's trying anyway, but uh, th this this family is a definition of fall from grace, and I'll get into that in a second. Pip, would you do me a favor and look up the name of that documentary that we were seeing about this family? Okay, here we go. 
So on July 8th, 2015, a 19-year-old man named Stephen Smith was found lying in the middle of the road in Hampton County, South Carolina. According to the Greenville News, Smith's death was originally ruled as a vehicular hit and run. But the investigation was reopened in the wake of Alex Murdaugh's double unsubscribed from life conviction. Smith's body was found not far from the Murdaugh's hunting estate, and his mother, Sandy Smith, began calling for her son's body to be re-examined shortly after Murdaugh's conviction. She even raised more than $53,000 on a GoFundMe to support the exum uh, exhumation. Exhumation? Exhumation. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, there were two. Yeah, if you could look them both up. That Yeah, there we go. Um, I think we've seen both of them. To support the, uh, the exhumation of her son's body and possibly to spark a new investigation into his death, the South Carolina law enforcement reopened the case in June 21, and they announced in March of this year they would be considering the case an unsubscribed from life investigation. If you go to the funeral, can you click dislike as you enter? Uh, you know what? At my funeral, yeah. Yeah, that's that's my plan. So, yeah, um, the thing about the thing about the this Alex Murdaugh dude, holy Hannah in a freaking handbasket. The first one is called uh, The Murdaugh Murders. That's on Netflix. The Murdaugh Murders, a Southern scandal. And, and um, Max has low country, the Murdaugh dynasty. And what it is that these this family basically this family ran, practically ran uh, this 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 little county in South Carolina. They practically ran it. And and the, yes yes secondhand these these folks were low dead. They were low dead. Um, no pun intended. And what happened was was that one of their sons. I think it's in the. Uh, I think it's in the, which one is it? Um, are we invited to your funeral? Of course you are. Of course you are. It's gonna be, it's gonna be, I, I, I wanna make sure that, that, that when it's my time, people show up with PKE meters and flux twos and all kinds of different things that I can set off because I'm gonna be that one. I'm gonna be that guy when it's my turn. I'm gonna be that guy. <laughs> um, but, um, but going back to it, so so on Max, it's the Low Country, the Murdaugh Dynasty, and then on Netflix, it's the Murdaugh Murders, a Southern Scandal. And what had happened was, was that the son, one of the, I think it was the youngest son, was more or less joyriding with a boat late at night after getting completely, completely um, loaded on various uh, alcohol that night, various kinds of alcohol that night. And uh, yeah, he basically uh, unsubscribed from life. His somewhat estranged girlfriend, who happened to be on the boat when when everything uh, went kaputs, and the the Murdaws were going out of their way to try to just lowball it and go, this this isn't the way it went. This isn't the way it happened. This isn't the way it happened. And they were they were being very blase about it because apparently they had dealt with this kind of thing before in their family and whew, man i tell you what those the, both of those documentaries are worth your look so again look up murder murders a southern scandal because you find out that it it runs in the family and yeah uh oof. It's, it's, the fact that the fact that the that the local law enforcement are looking into this case again yeah, that's a big deal. It's a it's a big deal. Hey, trifling toad, how are you? How are you tonight? Thanks for coming in. Okay, first clip of the night. I think it speaks for itself. I'm just gonna go on ahead and play it. Let me just make sure I got. Uh, should have volume and everything here, right? Yeah, video settings good. Volume good. Here we go. If ghosts aren't real, then explain this. I think that I think that's worthy of another look. I think it's worthy. Of, I'll, I'll I'll slow it. I'll slow it down. I'll slow it down to half speed. Here we go. If ghosts aren't real, then explain this. Legit. <laughs> Legit. 
We're done. We just proved the ghost exists. Yeah! We just proved the ghost exists on this channel. Somebody give to tune a call. We just proved the ghosts are real on this channel. Life of me, I don't know who, who who sent this to me. I might think it might have been my wife. <laughs> oh, play it again for Lizard. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I got I got to pull it back up. Hold on, <laughs> hold on. Uh, let's see. Um, got to make sure you're paying attention, Lizard. Got to make sure you're paying attention. Here you go. If ghosts aren't real, then explain this. Explain that. Explain that, lizard. It's the it's the goodest ghost. It's the bestest ghost. That boat that ghost is a good boy. It could be a good girl, but it could be a good boy. Nice and spoopy. <laughs> but we did it, everybody. We have proven that ghosts exist on this channel. All right. Now, now we're going to get to the serious stuff. Now we're going to get to the, so this one Scythe sent me. <clears throat> and Scythe, I'm going to, I'm going to be straight up with you. I'm going to, I'm going to, I really, <laughs> I would really do much thank. <laughs> um, I'm going to be straight up with you, Scythe. I was so perplexed by this. I went back and I, and I, and I, I, I went back to the actual, the actual nine minute video that this comes from. So we're gonna look at the clip that Scythe sent me, and then we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do a, a deeper dive. So this one again, courtesy of Scythe, and if I remember correctly, Scythe, you sent the the first clip you sent me um, had me again go into a deep dive, which I was I was cool with, but um, <clears throat> this one this one I was I was I was uh, yeah I was pleasantly surprised by this one. So let's take a look at this. It's an Airbnb owned by a young lady. The young lady assures the police officers that there is no one in the house and that when she arrived home from shopping, the front door was opened. At first it seems like an empty house, but as the officer moves on, unexplained things begin to happen. Police. As he heads up the stairs, watch this bedroom door. Anyone it seems inside, to open all by itself. Police. Anyone inside, make yourself known. Did you see it? As he rounds the corner, this door is already moving and already opening. He's immediately rushed by footsteps running towards him. But when he turns, there's no one there. Okay. So that's the short version. That's the short, okay? And, and I was curious, I was curious. So I found, I found the full version of this video. It is only, it is only like, um, well, the segment that we're watching is going to, is going to be less than, less than eight minutes, less than eight minutes. And it's funny you should say that lizard because on my buddy's podcast, don't turn around, uh, Phil Rossi, the guy that I do, I do the ghost hunting with. He actually had uh, a regular on this stream, a guy by the name of Noob, and Noob uh, is a former um, police officer. And he basically says, yeah, I have gotten calls that I cannot explain. And he's talked about, he talked about some of them. He talked about some of them on, on, on the episode that he was on, on, on the podcast he was on. So I looked up as to where this, this came from. And, and, uh, yeah, um, this is, it comes from Freaky What, at least that's the name of the, of, the, of the channel, Scariest Police Body Cam Footage. I was like, okay, let's give it a shot. I'm going to have an open mind here. We're going to take a look at this. And here's what we came up with. Oh, I'll go ahead and give it some, because I will say the production on this, uh, on, on this, actually not bad, but, um, yeah, let's let's take a look at what happens here.
Why is the car in the driveway? Why is the police car in the driveway? And why is one of the sirens, why is one of the, why is one of the police car um, lights on the hood? <laughs> Multiple police cars, but why is it in the driveway? And here, see here, here's, here's the thing. Um, hood lights are normal. Really? Well, here's the problem. There are only two visible lights we have here. And you'll notice that you'll notice that most of the light, it looks like it's coming from the top of the window and the hood. And yes, yes, Cy, they do pull in driveways, but I it it doesn't I've never at least in my area, I've never seen I've never seen the the, the police cars pull into the driveway. They would pull up front. They would pull up front. But the reason I'm the reason I'm a little sus about these about these particular lights, uh, one of the things I have I have an issue with with their lights, is I actually have a, a set of box lights that I use for paranormal investigations. They have different modes. One of the modes they have is something called emergency, and they flash red and green. And uh, and I think I think actually. <clears throat> It, yeah, that's the thing. The, the, it looks like it's resting on the hood. So already, I'm a little sus about that. And I didn't even think about the uh, the county uh, municipality being on the back. I, I didn't even think about that about that being on the back of the of the, of the police um, of the police jacket. But <clears throat> we had an issues with fake cops trying to arrest people with 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 like fake fake ID. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, so I'm, I'm a little, I'm, I'm already going like, okay, one, who pulls up into the driveway? Like I've never seen, I've, I've never had a police officer, at least in my neighborhood, I've never seen a police officer pull up in the driveway. So that, that's my first, that's my first red flag. Um, now I'm not saying, Scythe, I'm not saying this is a fake because let's get into the meat and potatoes of this. And then we'll talk about. Okay, I'm. Oh, mm, oh, mm, okay. So here we go. All right. Just stay.
release footage all the time now. Oh, I did not realize that scythe. Okay, well, again, asked and answered. That's why I like doing this. This is one of the reasons why I'm, I'm digging. I'm digging the uh, the the Grim Gazette because now we get to we get we have to work to work through this stuff together. <clears throat> Which means, side, if you've seen a lot of this kind of footage, you might be able to answer something for me here. Now remember, as the police officer moves upstairs, he's still looking for someone that has broken into the home. Right. He believes someone may be hiding around a corner, so his senses are even more heightened now that things unexplainable are happening. So here's one of my big questions. We're just going to go back. The unexplainable are happening. How common is that? How common is is it for these body cams to suddenly glitch out like that? Because my big issue here, uh, and I've seen enough. I've seen enough true crime. I've seen enough stuff on Discovery Channel. They even have an entire. They have an entire show. They have an entire show um, about body cams. I have never seen in any of their long segments, their long segments, I've never seen it glitch like that. And unless it's paranormal intervention. Now, <clears throat> let's we'll get to that in a second. Hi, Benedict. Watch where you step. Okay. I used to work for the detective in, uh, investigations department of my local police force, but I'm in the UK, so I can't really speak on US police forces. That is a cut. Yeah. yeah. Yep, small man is here. Please. Okay, now this is where it gets intriguing. Here's where it gets intriguing. So we have the we have the cut. Police. Anyone inside, make yourself known. Police. As he heads up the stairs, watch this bedroom door. Anyone it seems to open all known. by itself. It looks Police. like someone's on the other side pulling it. To my knowledge, to my knowledge, um, to my knowledge, uh, Sonny, that is standard as far as I know. I could be wrong. But um, you know they've got the they've got the light in one hand, and they've got the gun underneath. <clears throat> it. And, he and he seems incredibly calm. He seems incredibly calm watching this door swing open. Make yourself known. But this is where it gets this is where it gets crucial for me. This is where it gets crucial for me. All right, so the door swings open, right? He still hasn't found the choir. Now you see that, yeah. Look at this again. It seems to open all by known. itself. Now watch this. It looks watch like someone's again. on the other side pulling it. Anyone inside, make yourself known. No, no, wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it, Cammy. All right. So the door swung open. We, 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 the, the guy editing this has cut back to the original camera. Here's where it gets interesting. catch that anybody catch that watch again I'm gonna see if I can't stop it there And this was this was where I said, "Oh, Scythe, we were so close, we were so freaking close." Because I was I was starting to buy into this because I'm like, if this is a continuous cut around the door, but the fact that it that the camera glitches here, and and the the fact that they allow it to glitch here, and glitch at the bottom of the stairs, I'm like, I'm like, okay, someone would have noticed that this guy's camera is glitching this hard. But this glitch was the this glitch was the and if you did this to me on purpose, Scythe, 
God, I love you, my friend. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see the full video. I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to that. But boy, is this good. Because I, because when I, when you see the short, it's very compelling. When you see the short, it's very compelling. On the other side, but then, pulling it. Anyone inside, make yourself known. I mean, and 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 they're they're selling it. They are selling it. So he comes in, right? Now, what? But watch this glitch. If that glitch hadn't been there, I would have been like, okay, okay, you've got my attention now. You've got my attention. <laughs> Sorry, my brain is still in lights. <laughs> So again, I, I tap my hat to these folks. This was, and you see again, I tap my hat to these folks because watch what they do here now. Okay, so he checks the closet and he backs away and his camera glitches out again. And you know, and here's, here's how I could see these guys selling it. It's like, well, it's a glitchy camera. Because, you know, there was a glitch at the base of the stairs, right? Yeah, but now these glitches are happening at very convenient moments. Like, it's not a complete... And and you'll, you'll see this one more time. Because, again, we still haven't gotten that magic continuous cut. We have another, we had, we had another little glitch here, you know, adding to the consistency of glitches. And I, I honestly do not know how common it is for a uh, for a radio to go off like that, unless I, from what I know, that is, you know, the from what I know about law enforcement, um, they only they only the, the 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 radio only goes off when people contact you, you know. Okay, so let's go back to this, and remember, they're the only cops on the scene, so they left their lights on; they would still be on because there's no other there are no other cops showing up. Okay, so here we go. So we have another. Did you see it? Yep. As he rounds the corner, it. this door is already moving and already right. opening. Right. It mimics the same action right. as the door in this room. It's and 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 it's yes, we see it. Why look? Another glitch. Another glitch. Another glitch. Right as he's coming into the door. See, where it would have been convincing is if we see that door swing open, right? And then he just walks in and it's a continuous cut. But, and this is, uh, uh, again, similar to what happened with the, now this is, this reminds me of the TikTok that we saw with the, the doctors, but this is ramped up to a new level because they did that glitch at the very bottom of the stairs to sort of establish, oh, this is a glitch, this is glitchy footage. The camera's kind of on the frets, blah, 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 blah. So now we have the convenient glitch that happens right there. Can't even do the wire trick. <laughs> they did. They did. Oh, you've seen this one, John? Oh, my God. Uh, the door never opens totally. There's always the space that a human would take up standing behind the door. Yeah.
he's immediately rushed by footsteps running towards him, but when he turns, there's no one there. Um, this guy could have also could have also ran from, he could have uh, positioned himself in the other room and then literally ran from one room to the next. Or, or, or sounds of running in post, either one. But it would have been easier for someone to literally, because you'll notice, just backing it up. All right, let's back it up a little bit more. Okay, so he's in the other bed. So he's in the other bedroom, right? So he's walking. This is the second bedroom. His camera glitches out. Why is he backing out of the bedroom? <laughs> blame, blame, blame. You have the right to remain silent. Um, cops yell commands, not remain silent. That's the biggest giveaway. But here's the. This is the more important bit. He's walking backwards at this point. He is walking backwards. Hasn't shot once. Fake, fake, fake. No, wait a minute. All right. Maybe U.S. cops are a little trigger happy. But come on, just give us a little bit of a break here. I think the bigger issue is, is that he's walking out of the room backwards. He's walking out of a room. He's walking out of a room that he just checked backwards. Watch. I missed this the first time around. So, he turns, camera glitches out. As the officer turns yeah. to leave the upstairs, now he- He's not turning. He's walking out of that second room backwards, so he has his back to the main bedroom, the first bedroom that he was in. That's where the dude is waiting to run from one room to the next. Knows it's clear. And the reason why he would do that instead of putting it in post like my wife, like, like my wife uh, suggests, by having someone physically run, they can get the ambience of the of the of the house. They can get the ambience of the house. Here, right? Wrong. in this circumstance and he gets an a plus from me for effort i mean this was good this one was good but i mean i'm 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 sorry but if he's checked the room and he's checked both rooms why was he walking backwards out of out of that room if he's if you're walking backwards in any kind of situation like this i'm gonna i'm gonna make the bold assumption you have a sinking feeling or a gut reaction there's still someone in that room but, I mean, <laughs> um, yeah. He, he, but, but I will say this: based on, um, based on what Noob was uh, was telling was telling Phil, um, <clears throat> based on what Noob was telling was uh, was uh, this this friend of ours, Noob, was telling Phil about uh, his own experiences. He says, "Oh yeah, when you're doing when you're doing the the night patrols, you see some weird stuff." You do. You do see some weird stuff. Uh, speaking of weird stuff, we are now taking a look at D at D's dark adventures. Now, I I did say I did. If you if you're going if you're going to um if you're going to to do the joke, we're gonna do the joke. If you want to know more about D's dark nuts, 
Just do a search for D's nuts. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so let me explain this. This was a submission from Cammy. Cammy sent me a uh, a cap cut. Uh, it was it was it was a cap cut of some dude talking about. Um, so what was he talking? Oh, he was talking about skinwalkers and the, about the dangers of skinwalkers, and and he said it was a video. He was basically doing like a comment slash reaction video to someone that had to, to something that had been uploaded on D's Dark Adventures. <clears throat> And I thought, okay, well, wait a minute. Why am I giving this guy scream time? I should be going to D's Dark Adventures. I should be giving giving it to D. So I went to D's channel and I couldn't find the Skinwalker uh, clip, but I found a, I found something even more intriguing. Uh, and she's claiming that these are <clears throat> that these are Skinwalkers. She's looking at right here as well. So first off, Cammy wanted to know what are Skinwalkers. And let me first give you a quick rundown of what skinwalkers are. First off, you would never uh, refer to a medicine woman or uh, someone of high renown in a Native American culture uh, by a skinwalker because the skinwalkers were traditionally witches that would um, take on the shape. They were shapeshifters, basically, and they could take on the shape of different animals. I believe they could also take on the shapes of humans, right? So skinwalkers are, are are very dark entities or known as dark entities, and they're basically looking for new people that they can mimic. And, of course, if they're mimicking you, you're not around to, you know, tell them something different. And and it's, yeah, so that's, in a nutshell, that's what skinwalkers are. So, and, and if I got some of those things right, I did. If I got some of things wrong... Um, you can always do a little more research uh, into it on online, okay? But that is what a skinwalker is. And hey, how you doing there, Zipper? I knew I, I saw you came in talking about being late, but you do not have to apologize. The point is you're here, and I appreciate you being here. All right, so right now we are switching. We are switching modes here. I don't think there is a a um, there isn't a there is no full screen for this unfortunately but we're starting with this we're starting with this and this is a short uh and it's it's a it's a short of uh of miss d here and she is capturing i believe she is she is uh capturing a skinwalker um on the move here we go y'all can see that or not and it's moving right there it's right there i don't know if you guys can see that Woohoo! Um, Scythe, you were asking about the uh, uh, the um, Bigfoot calls. Here they come. It's. It's huge. Okay, you guys gotta understand. It's across the water and in that tree line. It knows my lights on it. It's not stupid. Right now. Okay. This is not helping my issue with cryptids. I'm just going to. Oh, and if you think we're done with D's Dark Adventures, nope. No, nope. I found a bigger clip that I wanted to share with you all, but um, I I do not look. D seems like a lovely person. I'm gonna say that. D sounds like a lovely person. You know how I think she's lovely? She's got a hundred thousand subscribers to her channel. One hundred thousand. Fuck. Okay. Oh, oh darn it. Fucking subscribers to her channel. She's worked hard to get those 100,000 subscribers. So, yeah. Um. <laughs> Let's look at the clip again. And then we're going to look at it. We're going to look at it a little harder. I don't know if y'all can see that but or she not. she seems it's lovely. Moving. Right there. It's 
right there. I don't know if you guys can see that. <sighs> Woohoo! I'm gonna walk up to it. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> I got my shit. Don't lose it, don't lose it. Okay, I'm gonna go on the road. And I got down. It's it's huge. Okay, you guys gotta understand. It's across the water and in that tree line. It knows my lights on it. It's not stupid. That's what she said. <laughs> okay. Now, now that we all have watched uh, this, and, and again, thanks to Cammy, because without Cammy, I would have never had found. Um, we, we have never found these dark adventures. Okay, so let's let's look at this clip one more time. I don't know if y'all can see that or not, and it's moving. Okay. Obviously, she is talking about that darker shadow, which is, in fact, a hole in the trees. I, I do not live... I do not live in a forest. I do not live... In in a um, I do not I do not live in a forest, but I have lived near woods before. And when you shine a light, and there's a hole in the trees, that's what it looks like. And if, as far as her saying it is moving, that is a trick of the shadow, because the hole isn't moving, but her light is. And here we go. Right there. Right there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Woohoo! I'm gonna walk up to it. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna get some shit. Don't lose it. Okay, I'm gonna go on the road. And I got down. It's. It's a hole in the tree, lady. It's a hole. In the trees. The other thing, too, with 100,000 subscribers on her channel. Okay, I'd like to know why she cannot, A, be equipped with a camera that has some kind of IR and better optics. Or, B, have one of those flashlights, one of those super flashlights where you can widen the beam. And when you widen the beam, you're not, you're not having to deal with the the bouncing uh, light source. But the thing is, the light, the, the, the shadow isn't moving. It's her light that's moving, which is giving the impression that the shadow is moving, but it's not. That is a hole in the trees. That is a hole in the forest. <clears throat> it's huge. Okay, you guys gotta understand. It's across the water and in that tree line. Yes, lizard. We can talk about that because that is what she's seeing. This is a, this is this is um, this is pareidolia at work. This is the this is pareidolia at work. Um, <clears throat> the brain is putting together, especially when you're out in the woods. When you're out in the woods, things can get freaky. I'm just going to come out and say it. Things can get super freaky. It's the reason I hate outdoor investigations so much, because. Stuff like this is too easy to mistake for, you know, movement. And and that's the thing. The the woods, can, um, the forests can be disorienting. Um, you know, I mean, as, 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 as much heat as the movie The Blair Witch Project uh, gets, it was actually quite accurate in how disorienting it can be being in the woods. You can literally, I mean, it has been known where people have just been walking in circles because they don't know what direction they're in because you can easily get lost. Pip and I were doing an investigation uh, in one of the Manassas battlefields. And and yes, in the shape, it looks like a gorilla. But it's, it's it, you know, it is, again, the brain in that moment is trying to work out what it could be. And when you get into certain parts of, of I mean, when you're in 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 the forest like this woman uh is in a lot the darkness takes on a whole new level of dark 
the kind of dark where you put your hand this close to your face and you cannot see a thing. And and it's just it, the shadows in in force are absolutely dense. So what she should be doing if she is exploring and looking for cryptids, she should have an IR camera. She should have uh, she should have a FLIR, which are now not only uh, super affordable when you've got a hundred thousand subscribers, but also you can just attach one now to your phone, and just record it that way. That's a hole in the trees. That that is a hole in the trees. I have been in enough forest to know. Um, so, yeah. It, mm. Yeah, this one broke my heart a bit. <laughs> and going back to what Lizard said, pareidolia is a very powerful. Um, it's, it, it's it's not a thing to be dismissed. It's a very powerful thing. It really is. No, 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 no. Because we got one more here. Because of you, Cammy. We got yeah one more from her. Um, when Pip and I were at uh, the Balladary Inn, we were both convinced. We were both convinced that we saw shadows like moving in front of the uh, caretaker's house. We were absolutely convinced, convinced that we saw shadows moving left and right, back and forth in front of the caretaker's house. And as we're describing the shadows, I switched to an infrared cam. Again, this is all on the uh, the holiday special that, that, that we have over at Old Spirits on YouTube. And you see, you see that while we're talking about these shadows that we see moving left and right, the IR camera reveals absolutely nothing. Nothing. Nothing is moving up there. And and if there was, and, and the thing, and the reason why we were convinced there was something moving was because it was solid. You know, we were we were convinced there was something solid up there, but it was just it was just pareidolia. It was our eyes playing tricks on us. And the other thing is that even if she's had this light fixed on this thing, it hasn't moved. It hasn't moved left or right. It hasn't moved away. So either A, it's staring at her, or B, it's okay with it being having a light shown on it. So no, this is a hole in the trees. Sorry. I feel bad, but sorry. It knows my light's on it. It's not stupid. Right now, Less I don't know more. if y'all can see that or okay. not, and it's moving. So that's the first video I wanted to share from um, uh, from from uh, these dark adventures. This one, little harder to dismiss. I'll be the first one to say it's a little harder to dismiss, but I do have a follow up on this. Now she's claiming. She claims in the uh, she claims in the in the description that ah yes that she is she caught video of the Ohio Grassman. Now this is a cryptid I do not know anything about and apparently uh it's either it's either it it's either uh, uh it's either a, a skinwalker or something else. But um also if it's a skinwalker it would have made calls. Okay. All right, so here oh! we go. So, Mia, wait. So she's out here with her dogs. And they're just they're they're apparently just wandering around the trails. And she's making calls to this thing. Come. She's got beautiful dogs too. I'm I got, I'm going to say she's got some beautiful dogs. I believe that's a pit bull. And that's a that's a very healthy, very loved pit bull. So good on her. I just got a pair of pit bulls, yeah. Girl, stay close. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I forgot. This is triggering for uh, for for uh, for for John over here because John's a dog man. He's a doggo boy. Yeah. <laughs> the dogs are the reasons why the subs are up. All right, now, now careful, careful. Come on. Seriously, Lana, call Kenny Loggins because you're in the danger zone. Okay, here we go. But here's where it gets interesting. I gotta admit, here's where it gets interesting. Woo! All right. I'm not 
Uh, the blue on the tree, um, the blue on the tree, if you were wondering, that's for that's for people walking trails to make sure that they don't get turned around or disoriented. You you go on ahead and you you basically follow you basically follow the follow that. I'm also thinking though about we we're watching so much YouTube of late. I I'm thinking I'm seriously thinking about getting YouTube red to make sure that we don't get commercials anymore. So and if I'm using it for if I'm using it for the uh the Gazette, then that means yeah, I can I can go on ahead and write it off my Texas. So there's that. Anyway, let's get back to this. We're only gonna watch this for a few minutes. It's so quiet besides my dog's paws. All right, here we go. Here we go. I do love how she's using her finger to tell you. Dog, what's can there. you please for a minute? Come. Stop. There's something. There's no fucking way, dude. Dogs, 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 dogs. Woo! Yeah. So Grassman is more of a Bigfoot than a skinwalker. Good to know. Okay, well here's here's what she's seeing. You can see it right there, right? In the fog. Can you please for a minute? Come. Stop. There's something. There's no fucking way, dude. Dogs, 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 dogs. Woo. Yeah. The thing I find the most amusing from this from this community, I got I got I got to call this out. You're seeing the possible capture of, of a cryptid in the wild. And I'm seeing a lot of anger in this community about how she's talking to her dogs. <laughs> I, 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 love, I love the people who come to my stream. I really do. I love the people who come to my stream. They've got their priorities in check. I'm getting, I'm getting the, uh, I'm getting this cryptid on, I'm getting this cryptid on film. Hey, lady, be nicer to your dogs. Seriously, lady, be nicer to your dogs. <laughs> I love that. And I'm a cat guy. That's the, that, that's the funny bit too. I'm a cat guy. But anyway, um, okay, okay, moving along. What the fuck? But I know the dogs are real, and the idea of the other thing being real terrifies me. Well, fair enough. Fair enough, Bryn. Fair enough. And thank you for thank you for popping head in chat and saying hi. I do appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Plus, the dogs aren't reacting towards it. They should be more reactive to it. Okay, and, and the fact that they're pit bulls and they're not reacting to it, and that is not a slam against pit bulls. I love me some pitties. I love me some 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 big old pitties. Okay, um, one of my one of my one of my um, uh, a friend that I made while I was streaming. He no longer streams, but I loved working with him on a charity that he did called Gaming for Pits. A guy by the name of Aura. He no longer streams, but man, that guy was that, that guy had a beautiful uh, rescue pit. And just, oh, lovely. Our fur babies would react. Well, that's the thing. And here's another thing to know about this particular um, video. And again, I'm not going to make this a pile on on Dee's Dark Adventures. She's got 100,000 subscribers. So in my, in my opinion, she's doing something right. She's doing something right. And I, and I, I, give, her, I give her absolute kudos. Absolute kudos for, for getting up. But here's the thing that I was, I was noting uh, from this particular video that we just watched together. I did a search, and sure enough, sightings of black bears in 
in uh, in, in Ohio, they're on the rise. Now, the Park Service has said that they have so many, so many scattered uh, black bear populations across the state. They don't know. They honestly do not know um, how many black bears there are total in the state. But um, she was actually doing the right thing by by doing the by doing the calls. If she does the call, the bear is going to keep its distance, and that's that was the other thing. Um, she was keeping her distance and and doing and doing the calls that the way it was moving it was very it was very bear like now you might be asking me t how do you know how does a how a bear how a black bear moves we actually watched this black bear kind of trundle along in front of our car when we were when i was taking a a, a friend of ours up to a cidery in the um bears are gonna bear bears are gonna bear and and um yeah I, I i i hate to say it but i think what she was filming was a black bear i i really do believe that 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 was a black bear that she was filming because black bears do not get big um they're not like grizzlies or anything like that <laughs> i was summoned <laughs> uh there we go hi panic hi panic thank you panic um it's no it's 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 still interesting it's still interesting. It's very intriguing. This this really was, and had had I had I pulled up this report about black bears in, o, in Ohio, and it said, yeah, we don't have black bears, I would have been like, oh okay, then that makes this even more intriguing, because it definitely it definitely wasn't moving like a deer or anything like that. But do I think it was a cryptid? I mean, for one thing, if this woman is going out, you know, looking for cryptids. I mean, I, I admire her her bravery because she's doing it by herself. And I would be the first one to say, yeah, don't do this by yourself. I there's a um there's a, a person that uh Phil had on, on his show. She she goes, um I, I can't remember her first name, but she goes by Hellbent Hollier. And Hellbent Hollier is uh this this woman that goes out uh looking for cryptids with her partner. So each of them have got they're, they're keeping their eye on one another. When you're doing this stuff solo, that gets a little that gets a little hinky. That gets a little scary. And and you better be able to make sure that you take care of yourself and 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 make sure that you can move and you can hustle. And she had two doggos with her and she was making and um, you know and you know, you might say, well, why did she run away from it? Well, she had the two doggos and at least she made she made the doggos her number one priority, which again, I respect. I do respect. Do I think she captured footage of a of a cryptid? I'm 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 gonna have to say I'm gonna have to say negative, Houston. Negative. I, I think I think what she captured was a was was a rare sighting of a black bear. Um uh, you know, and and you know, they're not to be trifled with. Her keeping her distance was probably the smartest thing that she did there apart from making sure that the doggos were okay. But I, I do think, I do think that, yeah, she, um, she did not, I, I, I don't think she captured a cryptid. And if she's really out looking for cryptids, um, oh no, it's still cool that she caught the, if, if that was a black bear, man, that's cool. And that's, that's something that um, the park service would be like, oh yeah, we wanna, we definitely want that footage. So she should make a copy of the footage and give it to them, and then she can say it's a cryptid, and they can say no, it's a black bear, and that's fine. Um, yes, black bears rarely. Yeah, exactly. No, I, no, I knew that. Yeah, black bears are the docile ones. Um, it's brown bears you gotta you gotta worry about, and the ones you have to worry about the most are brown cubs because if you see the cubs but you don't see mama, mama's close by. And 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 they are and and mama bears, mama bears are the ones you got to worry about, because they they will, if they even think that you're looking at you at, at her at, at at their little cubs the wrong way, yeah, she she gonna open a can, so you got to be worried about that. Um, now I've always noted that that the black bears are the chill ones and the brown bears are the the more intense ones. 
Okay, folks, seriously, has no one seen a horror film? <laughs> Now, which one are we talking about? Are you talking about ones with cryptids, or are you talking about cocaine bear? Which one are you talking about here, John? Which one are you talking about? Um, and this is why I keep my silly button doors. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. The answer is yes, T. Yes. So anyway, I mean, but honestly, uh, D's Dark Adventures, if you want something, um, yeah, she's, she's, she's very, I mean, she seems very sweet. Uh, when, 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 uh, when I saw her, the, the trailer for her channel, she was like, hello, my lovelies. And I'm like, oh, that's nice. It's a nice way to refer to your community. I mean, and I'd be the first one to say, yeah, I'm a, I'm a wee bit jealous. I mean, she's got a hundred K subscribers. I mean, let's go. I mean, I, I admire that. I, I got, I got subscriber jealousy. I got, I got subscriber jealousy. I do. My zoologist wife confirms what you were saying, boss. Well, thank you. Thank you. And to your zoologist boss, I say, tip of the hat because I, I respect people that, that deal with animals of all kinds that's 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 a cool gig to be a part of so yeah um sweet when she's not endangering tacos okay okay she was as far as we know john because i don't want to get into trouble and i definitely don't want this woman's community coming after me i really don't i want to make sure that it's clear i thought she's got great looking doggos they're look they look healthy and they were doing the right thing they were stay more or less they were staying close to their mom they were staying close to their human mom so there is that <laughs> okay you guys are gonna get you guys are gonna get me in trouble i see where it's going how about we do this let's take a break let's take a break we're gonna we're gonna uh we're gonna break so that uh if you want to hydrate you can hydrate if you want to get um if you want to get a drink get a drink if you want to get some uh if you haven't had your meds yet please take your meds do so right now because the next thing we're looking at is we're, 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 we're getting into part two. And part two deals with uh, the recent video from Project Fear. Okay? So let's go on ahead and let's do that. Let's go on ahead and let's, uh, let's break a bit. When we come back, I'm going to weigh in on something I didn't want to weigh in on. And that's where we're going to close out this... Uh, um, we're going to close out this episode of, uh, of, of of the Grim Gazette. Thank you all so much for the interaction, for the questions, for hanging out, for uh, the the subs, for the follows. I really and for those of you lurking and then just po poking up your head and then then disappearing. I love you guys. I absolutely love you guys. We're not we're not logging off for the night. We're not logging off for the night. We're just taking a quick break. Uh, make sure to get in a stretch. I love it. Side, thank you for for the uh, for for the clip. By the way, thank you so much for the clip. That was no, no, I'm not 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 logging off. We still got one more. We still got a little bit little bit to go, but I need to get some hydration, and I want to also uh, use the the little paranormal investigators room and just uh, stretch the legs. So stretch, take your meds if you need to, get yourself some hydration. I will see you soon. Okay, everybody, be right back. <laughs> 